Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind-the-scenes videos and two-minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear... Rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. All right, Bitch Talkers, we are super excited to bring you the author of one of the more fun books I've read in a while. It's called Sex and the Single Panda, The Revolting Pursuit of Love (laughs) in the Animal Kingdom. Uh, We're here with Dahlia Gallen Ramirez. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So excited. As are we. Yeah. Will you let our audience know uh, what Sex and the Single Panda is all about? How how did this book come to fruition? Oh, okay. Well, um, it is about the mating habits, mating and sex and courtship of animals. And it's told from, it's anthropomorphic. So it's told from the, each animal has a sort of dating mating profile. So they, each animal describes their own approach. And then reveals which animal they are. So it's a book, but it's also can be kind of a guessing game. You can read and try to guess what animal it is and then turn the page and see who it is. And then there are also some how-to guides sort of sprinkled through the book, um, like how to live with a sexual cannibal, how to tell (laughs) if she's into you, et cetera. Yeah, I, I love the way that you have set up the book. It's so smart. And um, I want to know how you figured out which subjects to use, which animals, which insects. I mean, there, I mean, there's so many in the world. So how did you just narrow down? Yeah. I mean, it was actually my first challenge. So the book started actually as a cartoon and it was a cartoon that featured nine male animals, nine bachelors, if you will. (laughs) Um, And uh, an editor at Chronicle Books uh, reached out to me because she saw the cartoon and she was like, this would make a great book. And my first thought was, am I going to find enough funny animals? Like there's a lot of weird stuff. There's a lot of scary stuff, (laughs) a lot of gross stuff, but will I be able to find enough animals to fill a book? And I also wanted to balance the genders. So I wanted to have, you know, find enough females because a lot of the sort of like the famous bad boys are, are boys like hippos, porcupines, um, (laughs) you know, they're often the, uh, the animals that you hear about. So I wanted to make sure I found females too. I really did a lot of research, I mean, months of research. And I wanted to find not just the sort of strange or shocking ones, but ones that had a little bit of pathos or sort of relatability to them. Ones that would be funny if they were to be people talking about it. And that is the most fun part of this book, like like Aaron said, is the dating profile aspect of it. <laughs> and, and I'm curious to know what your history is with dating profiles, app dating. <laughs> uh, did, did you do some research for this book? Because it's so funny and it's it's sort of realistic that just the way you word things mm-hmm. to make them seem human. <laughs> I think I actually I dodged the online dating world. I like missed it just by a hair. I, I <laughs> have been with my husband for 21 years. So we really just like, I got in under the, uh, a little more time and I would have been a lot more familiar with online dating. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I think I, I, mean, I certainly have dated some, some people that you, people in the, that, some animals remind me of them. <laughs> but I think that um, I think I just have a. I'm good at I'm good at channeling asshole. I guess. <laughs> a woman That's of the soundbite. That's a the woman sound of bite. our heart. A woman of our own hearts. Let's just yeah. put it out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's not like oh, incredible. you know, I chose the hippo because he reminded me of an ex, but. But there were definitely animals where it was like, oh, wow, you know, there's like, like the nursery web spider, he gives this gift 
and it's it might be it might be a real gift it might be nothing it might be <laughs> just like a total letdown and I, I can relate to that yeah I I mean I want to talk more about the spotted hyena and the roll-up dick but um that's one of my favorites <laughs> never seen one of those before but now I really want to I really want to see it is that I the know. pseudo scrotum mm -hmm. yes also oh. pseudo scrotum but I also can't... has the has a baby out of the dick right did I read yep. that right? Yeah, it's yeah. for childbirth as well. That yes. was my favorite too. I wrote yeah. it down. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> it is. She is amazing. And I have to say, I it took me hours of reading and rereading many different sources to try to understand this anatomy lesson. <laughs> like it's broke really it down confusing. really well. It was Thank confusing, you. but when I went back, because I did go back and was like, did I read that correctly? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. There's this, and then there's that, and then that happens. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And before, before I read what the pseudo scrotum was, I was like, I think I have a pseudo scrotum. I mean, don't we all have a pseudo yeah, scrotum? Yeah, we have Just a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if your listeners will, will want to understand what we're talking about. Of course they will. Yes. But <laughs> basically the female spotted hyena, she has a pseudo penis, which is actually a seven inch long, maybe longer if she's lucky, clitoris. Wow. And then her her the pseudo scrotum is actually her hurts her labia it's vaginal labia that's fused shut but the confusing part is that you'd think she might still have sex or give birth out of the vagina you know out of what this sort of out of her pseudo scrotum but she actually has sex and gives birth out of the clitoris it's a tube i mean it is so that's what's fascinating. super confusing about it it's confusing but also like wow mother yeah, nature science. man yeah yeah and exactly. science yeah well i'm curious to know what your what kind of emails you're getting now dahlia after these <laughs> google searches like what, what like have you noticed that you know everybody's listening all around us yeah what kind of ads are you getting what kind of emails are you getting after oh my god I, you know like <laughs> i'm getting ads for like cremation and adult diapers so that's <laughs> <laughs> I, that's uh, I, I wish i were getting more uh, ads related to this book <laughs> they just say, and I would love to get more emails about this book, but oh it just God. the book just came out last month, so right. I haven't I haven't gotten uh, too many emails yet. But I have gotten some really nice responses from people who are now saying they're really popular at dinner parties. Yes, yes. I <laughs> I can't wait till my neighbors come over and read this. Um, I do want to ask a little bit about your background. I mean, how long have you been drawing, and when did you know this was going to be? This was going to be the thing for you. It's actually kind of, it's an, I mean, I won't say it's an interesting story, but it's not the usual story. Um, so I always loved drawing and I did a lot of cartooning when I was young, like late teens and during college. And I, I loved cartooning. And for some inexplicable reason, I just stopped. Like mm. In my early 20s, I just moved on to other things. I was doing design work and I was in a band and I was doing music and I just, but in the back of my mind, I always thought like someday I'll go back to cartooning if I can and still remember how to draw. And then the pandemic happened and I just thought, and, and I couldn't do the music because we couldn't practice and be with other people. And I was like, this would be a good time for me to just see if I can still draw. And I started cartooning again and it just, I loved it. It made me so happy and I was, making myself laugh if no one else and i was <laughs> i was loving it and so i started submitting the cartoons and it all went from there yeah the drawings are really cute and fun but also you're just so funny where does this mm -hmm. where does this comedy come from do you have a background do you do you watch a lot of comedy because from your introduction i was already sold i'm Aww. like she's funny this is going to be this is going to be a fun read that's so sweet of you um i don't know where the funniness comes from i feel like I, I come from a funny family and I, I do, I love, I love comedy. I love humor. I like my dream job would be to be writing, you know, sketches for Saturday Night Live. That would be. You still could. <laughs> I still could. I, I'm proving that it's never too late. So who knows? exactly. <laughs> I think uh, Dahlia will talk about it off air, but I think we're all around the same age. So yeah, it's never too late. Um, I, I do have to say, cause Ange isn't on social media, God bless her. Oh, but I wow. went down your um, 
she's on it, but she's not on it. But I went down your Instagram profile and the, oh my, I really want Ange to get back on just to read your mom's, the cartoon about your <laughs> house. I was like this, yeah, <laughs> this makes so much sense. And every, when you walk into any parent's house, there's always the random shit. But so Ange, just, I'll just explain it really quickly. She has little frames. How many frames is it? Maybe four, ten, five, ten. 10? It's, it's of her mom's house of things in her mom's house that are, you know, like every parent and family, oh, yeah. grandparent that they, it's just there, like the basket of flutes, but no one plays the flute <laughs> in your family. Like, oh, that's were, so fun. Yeah. You were not going to believe this. Uh, by the way, Angela, I will send you, I'll send you a PDF of this cartoon. So you don't have to. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want her. Yeah, don't, don't, you're the best. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I actually just found out my cousin has a basket of flutes and also so, doesn't play uh, she might she, but hers are kind of like recorders and more like wooden flutes but <laughs> she's like i have a basket of flutes and someone else on instagram said that their mom had a basket of flutes so this just proves that there's someone out there no matter what has a best <laughs> no i don't understand no what is the root of the flute like, where did it start? Why did it continue? I don't so, One of the weird things that my mom has in her house, is she actually doesn't have them anymore. She finally, like after 25 years, she realized none of us were going to take up the flute. So she <laughs> gave it, she donated Sorry. the basket. To the flute. Who has a dream of all their children to play the flute? That's so amazing. So my mom had she had like a basket. She has a basket of wigs. She has a basket of flutes that was just in the dining room, like six or seven flutes and it, they were given to her by a very eccentric friend uh who used to give my mom like fur coats and Ooh. flutes and just weird things <laughs> so uh and we would always laugh about it we'd be like what are you waiting for like why do you have this <laughs> that like has anyone ever come over at your house and been like oh thanks <laughs> dust it off and play <laughs> <laughs> wow so, well, yeah. I was going to say, maybe she thought, you know, when the kids or maybe if there's grandkids walk in, they'll be inspired to play and then she'll live the dream. <laughs> I, don't she was, I don't think my mom was thinking even that intentionally about it. It was just like, how lovely. It's just basket. a basket of food. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was sitting there cracking up. I'm like, this is, yes, we, this is just so familiar. I'm so glad you think so, because I before I I, mean, I submitted it, um, that cartoon to The New Yorker, but before I did, I sent it to a few friends and I was like, does this resonate at all? Like, is this funny to anyone who's not a child of my mother? And, <laughs> and everybody was like, yes, yes, my mom has weird shit too. And that's the thing about art is that like at the more specific you get, the more relatable it is. It's the oddest thing, but it, you know, if you're too vague about things, people are going to brush over it, but the yeah. more unique and specific you are, it's going to resonate. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. It's but now, true. but now that you have this book and it's incredible, is there going to be a follow-up? Because I would mm. love one on, I would love one on dinosaurs personally, uh -oh. maybe some prehistoric mating rituals, I would buy the I, I would idea. buy the shit out of that. I love that idea. Yeah, prehistoric animals. Just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I think it was my husband was just saying like I wonder what dinosaurs did like what their I'm sure there are theories. We're not the only ones. The, they give did. the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. loves a good dinosaur. So <laughs> it's her spirit animal. Um, I guess maybe a last question before we wrap. I know you live in the city and I feel I like you live sort of near my hood. So what are your favorite? I mean, we don't have to tell all your stalkers, I guess, but I was going to say, what are all your kind of favorite spots to hit in the city, yeah. you know, either pre pandemic or now post pandemic? Totally. So I'm in the inner Richmond or is that where you are? Mm -hmm. Close. I used to live there. I have fond memories. Okay. Well, can we all, can I extract a promise that we can all get together? Oh yeah. Please. Can we yes. talk about dinosaur mating habits when we get yes. together? <laughs> yeah. You, you better guys, have some prepared. You'll uh, inspire <laughs> me for the next book. <laughs> Favorite places. I mean, I love Cinderella bakery. Of course. Yes. I have to shout out for Cinderella. Yes. Um, 
on Clement, I love, uh, there's a good place, Tang Long. Yes. Um, like Clement is third. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's, um, oh gosh. I know, sorry. That always it. happens to people when you ask the favorites because I do the same thing. Yeah. Well, I saw that you had a book event at Apple, Green Apple. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, they were great. They were great. We did, um, we actually did a dating game for the book event. So instead of just me reading from it, which was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> right. Uh, I just got some very funny friends to read the parts of the animals. And then we were like, why don't we just do an actual dating game where a contestant comes up and chooses. And it was so much fun. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. I want to, I want to partake next time. I know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can do another event like that. Well, I wanted to say before we go, the one that reminded me of Aaron was oh. uh, <laughs> when 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 she's not in the mood, she releases a powerful dong shrinking <laughs> pheromone. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. How do you do it? How do you do well, it? you know, I can't reveal my secrets <laughs> by eating too much dairy. That's yeah, probably <laughs> you know too much cheese, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm actually curious if if you have a minute. What? Yeah. Did you? Did each of you have a, a favorite besides the hyena? Is there an animal that you would be most inclined to date if you had? Oh, to, to date? Use? Oh. Well, I just I was like yelling this across the room to my husband. Also, everything I read, I'm like, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, he can actually read this. Um, but the Western honeybee. Mm -hmm. They just hi. See you later. Thanks for yeah. your dong. I'm and like, I'll be keep and I'll be keeping that. Yeah, and I'm keeping it and I'm flying <laughs> off. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So well, I don't you like that one. Yeah, no complications. Yeah, see you later. I, I just thought that the most unique to me, I love mating dances. First of all, that's awesome. I'm like, dance for me, and then maybe I'll give you some. I I think that's awesome. But the one that was most surprising and interesting to me were the ones that have built-in balloons i think that's yeah. so well, yeah. cool so it's like oh here's a balloon for you what do you think yeah. you know? <laughs> i think that's kind of cute it's amazing it is amazing how like how similar we are yeah you know give me give me a balloon or something sparkly and then mm -hmm. you know, yeah. maybe you'll get something sold yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what about yours who's your yeah name? gosh like i i think um I had it in the intro. I had to confess that the my favorite, if like really, if I had to choose, is the Southern Ground Hornbill. Mm -hmm. Yes, because mm. he's he's in the the love language about sticks, but he is just <laughs> like he sounds like my husband. He's like long eyelashes, a really Aww. great daddy, <laughs> yes, really strong. <laughs> just seems like a really nice bird. <laughs> oh cool. so did that help with like foreplay you're like pretend you're this bird <laughs> you want to get me a stick yeah a stick in your sure. mouth yeah this is what i want now <laughs> well thank you so much i i think aaron and i both needed to read something like this we needed a good laugh and it's so, it's so worth the purchase for all of our listeners. Buy it as a gift. Buy it yes. and read it, read it on the can. You know, yeah. do whatever you want. If you need a laugh, it's called Sex and the Single Panda. And we've been talking to the author, Dahlia Gallen Ramirez. Thank you so much for being with us. This was really fun. Thank you both. It's so nice to talk to you and meet you. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. <laughs>